welcome to this update on my Neos in Semi Hydro. Even though this video is really about updating the little ones I put into Semi Hydro earlier in the season, I wanted to show my Neo Phoenicia Falcata, the classic one, as an intro. Otherwise, we're going to be staring at some twigs. Thank you, Better Pal Fish, for your request on this update. Let me just say I'm keeping my fingers crossed for your little Neo. May it root and grow. But I find that the Neo Falcata is always such a nice foliage looking orchid. So I brought it back into the update because, of course, it's finished blooming by now and it is pushing out more new growth which is fantastic all these additional fans are going to create the nodes for next year's blooming should nothing go wrong and true to form now that everything has finished blooming and we're back into the active growth phase i've got root tips starting to grow again and all the roots that are circling in the pot some of them have their root tips growing again which is fabulous who doesn't like that where are you like there there's one example so my falcata is gearing up for more strength, more growth, and then hopefully more blooms next year, should nothing go wrong in the coming winter season. And let's move on to the candidates that are actually the star of the show of the update. This is the Falcata Goja Fukurin, a super slow grower, but you can see that there is a marginal improvement in her appearance compared to earlier in the season. The roots are hydrating beautifully, and her center leaf is also coming out, which normally in past years she didn't do. She'd only managed ever to push out one or two leaves very, very slowly. I've never actually managed for her to push out a third leaf. Besides, look at the leaves that she's grown since her transition into semi-hydro. They are a third longer than the previous leaves. So I'm very pleased with the progress on my Goja Fukurin. Here we have Falcata Shuteno. I'm seeing little white bits at the base. I don't think it's anything to be worried about. I doubt that it's pests, but you never know. My little Shuteno had two gorgeous, gorgeous roots growing when I transitioned her. One of which you can see has failed, and the other one, the root tip stopped growing right where that lecker bead is, even though I would have thought there was plenty of humidity there. So Unfortunately, those roots did not progress down into the media. However, all the other roots are hydrating beautifully. I don't see any sign of decline. And on top of that, that little fan that was growing, look at it now, look at it now. I'm very, very pleased to see that because I believe that the center crown is compromised even though there is a leaf showing. It has not progressed much at all. So there's a bit of a hit and miss going on here with that center crown. And then the little fan in the back, which was too buried in the previous setup. You can see that that one has not declined one bit. What pleases me about this is the fact that I didn't have to do much misting. Regular flushing just to keep the media dry and very low fertilizer level of 100 parts per million, just like my tolumnias. And the leaves are dusty because, hey, they're not rooted into their pots and dusty leaves are safer than me jiggling around with roots that are trying to get accustomed to a new environment. Here is my little Falcata set Suzanne. A reluctant little grower, but ooh, we've got progress. That crown that I thought that was compromised, oh, look at it, look at it. This is the best development in the years that I've had this orchid. The little root stumps that we had, they didn't continue. They weren't interested. The one root that we had when we put it into the semi-hydro, it's hydrating beautifully, proof being that crown is active and growing. There's a tiny little root starting, hopefully going to progress, and that is a good sign. This is also a super, super slow grower, so you can imagine that me having them in the wrong kind of leka mix and then trying to compensate with Akadama, the fact that they didn't die on me speaks for the toughness of these orchids. So, better pal, there is hope. I'll revisit that comment in six months because I have to push them through the winter without supplemental light and without heat. Healthy neos can take a lot of cold. They can even be in my climate living outside 365 days a year like my falcata there. 
it's absolutely fine for them, but these little guys are not tough enough to be living outside. So fingers crossed that the winter is not going to take them out. That's going to be the next test. But I have one more that I want to show you, and that is my Falcata Kibana. This one had the longest of the roots. <laughs> it was being supported by a container with some pure water in it, and they had to fit into the pot. Hence, she's a little bit askew in the pot, but you know, the roots take priority and aesthetics will come and follow later, maybe. But you can see when I was cleaning her in that last video, in the transition video, I thought what could be a spike Turns out it's a new growth. And this is what it's done since that video. It's been slow, but Kibana is a slow grower. But you see here, look at the leaves. They are green, lush and healthy. And I am getting a third leaf of the season as well. It's also longer, much, much longer than the previous two in the old setup. I'm very, very hopeful. This looks promising. They have also all been sprayed with that insecticide because all season since their transition, they've been living on the top shelf of what was the video, which in the lower shelf is my worst orchid shelf. So they haven't shown any signs of being attacked by that pest. However, preventatively, I did miss them down as well. And just now putting them into their position, I snapped a little leaf off of my Setsusan. That's unfortunate, especially that one needs all the leaves it can get. Anyway, <laughs> oh, bummer. Overall, I'm very, very pleased with their progress. I am cautiously optimistic, though. Let me just check this leaf here, if that was a snap or what. No, that's firm. I am cautiously optimistic, though. I will be so happy when it comes April 2023 to put these out in a group together again and tell you they are still all alive. As we're heading into fall and the cooler temperatures and they're still in active growth, the fertilizing continues at 100 parts per million. Calmag and seaweed goes in at a total of 100 parts per million. But I divvy that up to 60 parts per million of calcium and magnesium and 40 parts per million of seaweed. And I alternate in between flushes what they get. So I alternate the fertilizer, I flush, flush, flush after a couple of days, and then I add the Calmag and the seaweed and, you know, rinse and repeat and just keep that rhythm going, probably until I see that their growth has completely slowed down, after which all I will be doing is making sure that the ceramus doesn't go too dry because it will become a desiccating agent and then draw moisture out of the roots in the pot. That is the plan for winter. Should anything change, I will update you. Good, bad or indifferent. I will take indifferent and I will take good. If it's bad, oh well, you will know about it. <laughs> Fingers crossed <laughs> that it is indifferent or good. Thank you so very much, Beta Pal Fish, for your request. I hope that this gives you hope with your little Neo. Let me know in the comments if you have any further questions and if I can help in any other way. The form for my orchid details is pinned in the comments section. And if you would like to run a few further details by me, give me a little bit more x-ray vision into your circumstances. If you think that you would like more help, fill out that form. I'll be happy to get back to you with more details. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate it. I wish you a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.